my favorite Richler novel is totally politically incorrect, and I guarantee that it will never be reprinted. It's called The Incomparable Attuck. Never heard of it, have you? No. Well, it's my favorite. I think it's one of the funniest, devastatingly satirical books about Canada I have ever read. I mean, things do change. I mean, I mean, for most of my adult life, it was assumed that every South American country was run by a dictator, and that's not true anymore. Um, so, so things do change, but I think there'll always be uh, governments who, that don't want to hear what what, uh, what people have to say. At every event we host, and at literary festivals across the country. Penn Canada asks that a place be reserved for a writer who cannot be in attendance, who cannot do what Calvin, Charlie, and Sean are about to, exercise our right, perhaps even our obligation, to speak out and to be bold, active citizens. This evening, we are joined by Nazreen Sotadeh, a prominent Iranian human rights lawyer currently serving a six-year prison term for her outspoken advocacy of clients arrested after the June 2009 presidential elections. This evening, we have the privilege of hearing a legendary comic writer and a comedian, actor, and author as they consider the state of humor in this country, particularly since the passing of our leading literary satirist, Mordecai Richler. Their conversation will be moderated by Charlie Foran, president of Penn Canada, and among other things, Richler's most distinguished biographer. Funny, strange, satire after Mordecai Richler is a good, pertinent topic. Penn Canada, as Randy mentioned, is a freedom of expression organization. We are all about defending to the death the right of someone to ask the hard, unwelcome questions or to make that possibly dead wrong comment. In 1992, on the occasion of his resi the resignation of Brian Mulroney as Prime Minister of Canada, Richler published an appreciation of him in Saturday Night Magazine. It contained a sentence that had tongues wagging for months. In office, the sentence read, Brian Mulrooney lied regularly, even when it wasn't necessary just to keep in shape. <laughs> Richler reprinted the Mulrooney piece in his final collection of essays, Spelling the Cat. In the book, the sentence now read, or now reads, all politicians lie, but few as often, or as mellifluously as did sincerely yours, Brian Mulrooney who lied even when it wasn't necessary, just to keep in shape, his voice, a dead giveaway, sinking into his Gucci's whenever he was about to deliver one of his Whoppers. <laughs> what was Richler doing in the first dig, rhetorically, and what was he doing in the second? Well, I think the, the first one, I, th I think you might have heard that. I mean, that's not an amazing thing to say. He lies to keep in practice, the, but it was sort of bold thing to say. The second one, he really refined it. And, and the word Gucci is important there, I think. He's not sinking down into his loafers. He's sinking down into his Gucci's. Uh, and, and as I said the other day in that newspaper thing, I think specificity is, um, is important in humor. Sean, do, do, do jokes or digs get better and better? Or do you try, do you, is that how it works? Well, in the first instance, I think he was working under a deadline. <laughs> That's true. And he had to get it out quickly. Yeah. And then the second one, he had a lot more time. And it was probably being paid by the word. <laughs> right. This is called a bilingual conversation after the Meech Lake Accord failed to pass the Newfoundland and Manitoba parliaments. It's a good title, but thank you. <laughs> it's one of my shorter titles. I know Meech Lake's defeat has caused a stir. What can one say except such things occur? At tout à l'heure. But most of us were pro, believe you me, why just because the Newfies in one Cree have not allowed this noble pack to be, you can intend to pack your bags and flee. May we? Oui. <laughs> and how about the biling bilingual goals declared? And how about the Anglophones who cared? What say you to the history we've shared? Man. <laughs>